Hi and welcome to category 7 of mini program challenges. In this category, we are going to have 10 uh, mini programs, 10 challenges for lists. Right now on the screen, you can see the timestamp for this video, and I'm going to give you five seconds to, to just go ahead and look at it. So let's go ahead and let's dive into the first challenge. Uh, the first challenge says that we have to reverse the below list. So, well, you have to reverse it. So uh, go ahead, as usual, pause the video. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. So how was the challenge? I'm sure you did great. So let me just go ahead and copy our list from there. And the way that we can reverse a list is uh, we can just go ahead and I'm just going to, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and print it. Now, I'm going to grab our list and I'm going to use uh, indexing. So I want to grab the entire list and I want to reverse it. So I'm just going to provide the step as negative one. And this is going to reverse our list for us. There we go, 500, 400, 300, 200, and 100. So this is the first question. Let's dive into the second question. So the second question says concatenate two lists index-wise. So go ahead, pause the video. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. Now let's dive into the solution. So uh, for the solution, what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to copy these two lists and I'm going to create a list three or a list three. And I'm going to say, I'm going to grab, uh, I'm going to use a list uh, comprehension expression. So I'm going to say I plus J for I and J, we need to specify I and J which are in the zip function and within the zip function we are going to pass in list one and list two that's it so this is going to uh, combine these two or concatenate these two lists index wise so we have our list three let's go ahead and let's run that it says my name is kelly very good uh, let's move on to the uh, third question these questions are pretty uh, simple very very uh, simple questions that's why i'm just breezing through them and there is no not like that much uh, of uh, explanation right so uh, we have already talked about uh, list indexing list concatenation we have already talked about uh, the zip function what it does how it combines other lists together right so in this uh, question it says Given a Python list of numbers, turn every item of a list into its square, right? So go ahead, pause the video, and you're going to see my solution after three seconds. Let's dive into the solution. So I'm going to grab our list first, and I'm going to say list is going to be equal to, we're going to use a list comprehension expression. So we want to convert it into its own square and now the x is the variable right i need to specify what that variable is so i'm going to say for x in list that variable is basically every individual element within that list that we have so if i print the list now we should have 1 4 9 16 25 36 and 49 very cool uh, let's go to question number four Question number four says, concatenate two lists in the following order. So we have, hello, dear, hello, sir, hi, dear, hi, sir. Go ahead, pause the video. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. Now, I'm sure you did great. First, let's go ahead and let's copy these two lists there. And I'm going to say, let's just say result. Um, and I'm going to say, x plus y for x in list one and then i'm going to say for y in list two that's it so we are going to say print result let's save that let's go ahead and let's print hello dear hello sir hi dear hi sir very cool
Uh, let's move on to question number five. So question number five states that uh, we need to go ahead and use the given two lists, iterate both lists simultaneously such that list one should display item in the original order and list two in the reverse order. So pause the video. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. How was the challenge? I'm sure you did great. Copying the two lists initially, then I'm going to say for uh, X and Y in, uh, let's pass them within the zip function. I'm going to say list one, and then I'm going to pass in list, uh, list two. Now, for list two, we need to reverse the order. So how can we reverse the order? Just provide a step of minus one. And then we need to print X and Y. That's it. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So this is iteration, iterating over the first list and the second list, but in reverse order. That was question number five. Moving on to question number six. Uh, it says, remove empty strings from the list of strings. Pause the video. You're going to see my solution uh, in three seconds. So we have our list. Uh, and I'm going to copy it, put it right there, and then I'm going to create a result. And I'm going to grab the, uh, the list function, and I'm going to use uh, the filter function, and I'm going to filter that list. Now, the none is going to take care of all the empty spaces that we have. And I need to provide the iterable as well. And that is list one. Let's print the result. And let's take a look at it. So we have Mike, Emma, Kelly, and Brad. We don't have these two empty spaces or uh, empty strings. Moving on to question number seven. It says add item 7,000 after 6,000 in the following list. Keep in mind, after 6,000. So go ahead, pause the video. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. How was the challenge? I'm sure you did great. So let us grab our first list, our list right here. So I'm going to say list one. Now, the first time that I access the index, it's going to be the index of the immediate children. So the immediate children, this is the first element, the second element, the third element, the fourth and the fifth one, right? So this has an index of zero, index one, this entire thing has an index of two, then index three and four. So what do I want to do? I want to grab index two, which is going to give me this element, right? Now within this element, because this is another list, I need to access that using another pair of square brackets. So I'm going to say this is index zero, one, and this is index two. So I'm going to pass in index two, right? So now I am within this list, 5,000, 6,000. I'm going to say append, which is going to add it to the end of the list, append 7,000. Let's print list 1. And there we go. We see after 6,000, we have our 7,000. Very cool. Uh, moving on to question number 8. Uh, it says, given a nested list, extend it by adding the sublist. Uh, this is the sublist in such a way that it will look like the following list. It should look like this. So you have this list. You're going to append this sublist into that, and it should look like this. All right. So go ahead, pause the video. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. How was the challenge? I'm sure you did great. So let's just copy the list itself. And then we do have our sublist as well. So sub list, that's H. And then, oops, uh, we have H, we have I, and we have J, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say list one, I'm going to grab the item with index two. Then within there, I'm going to grab, now let's just dissect this first. So we have J, uh, we have H, I, J. So they are here, H, I, J. So I'm going to grab the item in the index two first. 
Then I'm gonna grab the item with the with the index two, uh, with the index one. Sorry, the second item, which is this one, and then I'm gonna grab again the item with the index two. So it's two one two, right? So two one and two, and then I'm gonna say extend because it said extend sub list print list one. Save that. And let's go ahead and let's take a look at it. There we go. So we see H I J right here. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N. Perfect. Uh, moving on to question number nine. So in question number nine, it says, where is the question? It says, find value 20 in the list. And if it is present, re replace it with 200. Uh, only update the first occurrence of the value. Pause the video. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. All right, so how was the challenge? I'm sure you did great. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to put it right here. And then what we are going to do is I'm going to create an index variable. I'm going to grab the list one. And now I want to find that element, that elements index. So I'm going to use the index function. very good then i'm going to grab the list and within that index so this this is going to give us an index and we store that index within this index variable then i'm going to i'm going to using that index variable i'm going to select that element and i'm going to put 200 uh, and i'm going to replace it with 200. now if i take a look at the list that we have the first occurrence of 20 was right before 25 it has become 200, but the second occurrence has not changed. And now let's move on to the final question. Very cool. Now it says remove all occurrences of 20 from the list. Pause the video. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. All right. How was the challenge? I'm sure you did very well. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it there. Now, I'm going to create a helper function. This helper function is going to grab, it's going to have a name of remove value. And I'm going to pass in a list as well as a value. Very good. And I'm going to say return value for value and list for value and list. If, now keep in mind, if value is not equal to oops is not equal to the value very good now um i'm going to change this to val just to make sure that we are actually selecting that function parameter right remove all occurrences of 20 from the list very good now i'm going to say result list let's call the function remove value and the function is going to accept a list, which I'm going to pass in, and it's going to accept a value, which is going to be 20. Now, it's going to return all the values of the list except the value that we have passed in. In a sense, it's removing it. So, uh, list. We shouldn't see value 20. We still see that um value for value in list if value is not equal to all right so i've basically passed in the list i'm gonna say sample list there we go let's copy that and put it right here let's run this again we see the same result. So we have remove value, we pass in our list, and we pass in the value. And we return from this function, what do we return? We return value for value. This is our variable, this is our loop. So for value in sample list, if value is not equal to val. It should work. 
not really sure what the issue is. Oh, I should pass in the results list. Right, sorry. Why am I passing the original list? The uh, change list, it has been stored within this variable. That is why we created that variable. Now, if I take a look at it, we see 5, 15, 25, and 50. So with this, our lecture, uh, our seventh category comes to an end. And see you guys in the next one.